Um, I would also like to now introduce our first speaker, and actually I think somebody who really doesn't need any introduction to members of the Explorers Club, Anusha Ansari. She is the um, first female space traveler, a space explorer, who went up in September of 2006, I believe, and uh, also uh, funded the Ansari X Prize, which uh, stimulated um, Bert Rutan to build his famous Spaceship One, and Bert Rutan's company Scaled Composites to build his famous Spaceship One, uh, which won the Ansari X Prize and sort of has paved the way uh, for the next generation of commercial space travelers. And Anusha, please join us here. And I would like to welcome you on behalf of the Explorers Club. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And uh, if I had known that you would watch the TEDx uh, video of Caroline, I would have just saved myself a trip because that uh, basically uh, summarizes why I feel so passionate about space exploration and exploration in general. But since I've made the trip, I'll make you sit through the presentation for, with me. Um, I started looking at exploration from the early days and uh, noticed that our motivation for exploration has changed. If we look back in early history of humans and you know, in the, our hunter-gatherers times, we explored because uh, of need. We were looking for food, for shelter, so we went outside the comfort of our known uh, areas to look for those things. And as we became more industrious and learned to uh, produce more than we needed individually and started trading, uh, our motivation for um, exploration started changing from need to more of a greed-based seeking wealth. Uh, and it's not a bad thing, it's just that the motivation changed at that time. So if you look at uh, between the 1300s and 1500s and um, you know the expeditions to explore new world, you will see that a lot of them were uh, funded by governments uh, and by uh, wealthy individuals in or along the trade routes and trying to create more ways of um, finding new lands, uh, gaining riches, basically. And then we evolved again. And if you look at the, the past um, you know, century, I would say the motivation for a lot of the explorers were more of a personal nature or uh, for governments and it was ambition based to be the first at something if you look at you know the first to uh, climb mount everest the first to make it to south pole or you know the whole space race was about uh, uh, being first and showing super superiority uh, but if we look in the more recent years, in the past uh, couple of decades or so, uh, we see that there is a new uh, breed of explorers. Uh, explorers that are doing things more of a personal nature. They're, they're exploring because of a passion they have. It may be that they are uh, you know, seeking knowledge. It may be just because of the adventure of it. Um, or uh, just wanting to push uh, the boundaries of, uh, you know, our physical boundaries of uh, our environment or ourselves and uh, trying to do things that are considered to be extreme. But whatever it is, even uh, whether it's um, exploring the depth of the deepest oceans or, uh, you know, the space, whether we're looking for indigenous uh, life on our planet, uh, and wanting to learn about it or on other pl planets, uh, or even trying to find out more about life itself. The exploration has taken a more personal uh, uh, nature to it. And again, I'm not standing here trying to say that this is a more noble reason for exploration because we benefited as much from exploration done by uh, the you know several the categories that I spoke before as we have been uh, benefiting from explorers today. So exploration for any reason, the result of it is good. It's good for humanity, it's good for all of us. And uh, you know, I was asked why you know, space exploration or why exploration is important. Um, and I started thinking about why this is important to me personally, why I feel it's, it's, it's a good thing to promote. And um, the most important factor, I think, is inspiration. 
what I've learned through the past few years after my trip to space, and I wasn't trying to do this necessarily to gain fame, so it wasn't an ambition for me, uh, or to be the first at anything. If I was the you know 1,000th person to go to space, I would be as excited uh, to do it as uh, I was being the first Iranian to do it. But um, the, the fact that I found out that it has inspired so many young people and um, pushed them to go after things that they had sort of given up on. Uh, it, it told me that being able to do something that inspires others is very, very important. Uh, Lori showed this picture as well, and this is probably one of the um, most widely distributed uh, and used picture of Earth, if not of you know any picture. And it's a picture taken by uh, astronauts on the Apollo 17 uh, mission, the last uh, mission to moon. And uh, it's an image that sort of touches people on so many different levels. It has inspired people to want to learn about uh, our planet, to want to uh, you know protect our environment. It has inspired people to write poetry, to uh, paint paintings, uh, we have seen people compose music. Um, it has inspired people in so many different ways. So if I look back and I want to say, probably the way this image, the single image, has touched human psyche and has risen awareness, uh, it's probably as valuable, if not much more valuable, than all the scientific data that we gathered on all of those lunar missions. And the appropriately the astronaut who took the picture called it the, the blue marble. Um, the other aspect that is very important uh, in my opinion is the ability uh, to dream. Uh, exploration gives us permission to dream and uh, life without being able to dream I think it's uh, quite a boring life to be honest with you. Um, this ability to be able to seek things that we cannot see, to be able to imagine things that are outside realm of possibility, and be able to actually go after them and try to use our imagination. And that's what sets us apart as human beings, the ability to think of things that do not exist. And it may start with just a tiny uh, you know, idea that sparks in our mind somehow. We may be, uh, you know, watching something or looking at something and it sparks an idea or it may be because we saw something on TV. Um, it could be in Iran even and or something that we read and uh, in any case any of these things will spark an idea. We will start pretty soon seeing ourselves in those positions and sometimes those dreams will come into reality. Um, so th that's another aspect of uh, uh, this. And curiosity is another uh, reason for exploration. We are curious beings. We've always been. And if it wasn't for our curiosity, we probably would have been stuck in stone ages. So that urge to discover is something that has always propelled us to learn more about our lives and our environment. And this was something that when Space, I was a kid, I always The final it. frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go boldly where no man has gone before and to find new life and new civilizations. Um, the other, um, the other aspect of exploration uh, actually is more on a personal level, but it's something that through sharing our experiences, we try to pass that on. And it's the whole journey. Uh, a lot of explorer, explorers always have a destination they go to. But when you talk to them, the stories they share, it's as much about the whole um, journey as it is about their experience at destination. Uh, Charles Lindbergh talked about how much he loved flying. It wasn't about making it to Paris and winning the prize. It was about that experience of flying. Uh, in the six months that I spent in Star City 
training uh, for for uh, you know my mission, I probably learned much more than I learned on the nine days I was on the space station. The friendships I made, um, you know, the, the the learning experience I had about the Russians and their culture, and uh, all the uh, lessons I learned just about the whole history of exploration and the lives of people there. It was as valuable to me and things that I will cherish for the rest of my life as the uh, entire experience of being on the space station. Um, The other thing that exploration uh, teaches us is how far we can push ourselves. Uh, we are uh, an evolving species, and the reason we evolve is because we always push ourselves, we push our boundaries. And uh, just looking back in the past 20 years, if you look at the, uh, um, the records of different athletes in uh, the Olympics competitions, we can see how far along we've come. And it's because always someone decides that they can push a boundary, they can push a limit. And th this not only paves the way for others to want to go even further, it also teaches us about ourselves and our character. And this is why I like the quote from um, uh, Edmund Perry, who was the first person who climbed Mount Everest. And he agreed with that, that it was as much about learning about himself as about conquering Mount Everest. So coming down to space exploration, and again, that's the part that I think uh, I probably should stop here because Caroline just put it so beautifully. Uh, all the reasons why space exploration is so important to humanity. Of course, uh, you know, uh, one of the images that I truly, truly, I'm always amazed at, no matter how much I look at it, is this image of uh, that Hubble, one of the images of Hubble telescope of the uh, deep space. And um, the Hubble telescope basically stared at an empty patch of space for 10 days. And out emerged this, this is one of the images that uh, was captured during that 10 days. Um, and if you look at it, you see about 3,000 galaxies. And just, you know, trying to imagine that an empty patch of space containing 3,000 galaxies and the possibilities that each one of those galaxies hold. If we find what Caroline was talking about, possibilities of life um, on any of those places. It just, you know, starting to think about it, and then you think about, you know, our universe is about 47 billion light years in radius. And billion is a large number, it's hard to imagine. You make it 47, and then now you talk about the 47 billion light years and how vast it is. The possibilities are endless. And space is one of those uh, areas that as can always capture our imagination and want us to learn more. And through learning about it, we'll learn more about ourselves. It is as important also to look at space and the resources in space and being able to find ways to harvest those to solve some of our problem. Our biggest conflicts on our planet is about resource contention. And there is uh, plenty of them all around us if we can find ways to harvest them and, and uh, do that peacefully. Um, Carolyn talked about United Nations. I had a first-hand experience with that being on the space station and seeing how astronauts from different backgrounds, different uh, languages, different religions, how they work so closely together, put aside their differences, and accomplish so much. And part of it, it has to do with the fact that I think when you're on the space station, um, you look around you and it's like your planet, your home. And you know that you don't have any other choice, any other option. You can't sort of you know, kick someone out because you just didn't like the way they talked to you today. This is it, this is your home, you have to learn how to live together. And if we all started looking at our planet that way, I think we would go a long way. And I'm, I'm gonna talk to Lori and see if we can just send all our world leaders maybe on a trip to the space station. <laughs> Maybe let them have the peace talks up there and won't let them come back until they come up with a solution. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lastly, uh, I guess maybe a little bit controversial, but um, my good friend Elon Musk always talks about 
um, you know, being in technology, we talk about backing up, backing up, um, you know, our data all the time because it's precious to us. And our species, uh, you know, is in a very um, a sensitive uh, part of this universe. It's a very unique place we have on our planet. And if something goes wrong, something happens, whether we do it to ourselves or something outside our control comes and changes that environment, uh, it will make it very difficult for us to survive. So why not have an option to be able to continue uh, our race to maybe some other place in this vast universe? And in order to do that is something that it will take many, 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 many years. And it has to do with how we can find ways of living outside our comfort zone in our planet. And that's why another reason space exploration is important. But more than anything else is the mystery of it and how we can always look out there and ask all those old age questions about our origin, why we're here, what are we doing here, are there other uh, life forms out there, and will we ever be able to communicate with them, will we ever see them? And all those questions have captured my imagination and I hope to capture your imagination and all the young people that we have that are looking for, uh, you know, good things to propel them forward. Thank you and enjoy the interview.